Max, when I want to really try to understand what reality is all about, the first question I want to know is, how big is it? Now, I know that 100, 150 years ago, people thought the universe was just a few thousand light years. And then suddenly it became millions and then billions, and today it's uh, 14 billion light year radius. How can we begin to understand this question? How big can the universe or reality, how big can it be? <laughs> That's a great question. I think we humans have historically been kind of anthropocentric and called the universe is all we know about. So mm -hmm. ancient cultures, I think, viewed the universe as basically as far as you could walk in a lifetime. Right? <laughs> and then Eratosthenes in ancient Greece figured out the size of our planet. And people went like, whoa, it's that big? And, and then his other ancient Greeks, of course, figured out that the moon was dramatically farther away than that, and the sun and the planets farther still. And then the universe was more or less our solar system. That's, that, people thought that was everything. Yeah, that was everything. There was these little twinkly things <laughs> they called stars, which seemed to be still farther away, but they didn't really know what was up with them until a few hundred years ago when people started to measure the distance to the nearest stars. And again, we're just shocked by how far away they were. So far away that it would take three years, even for light, to get to the nearest star. So if someone over there is looking at us now, they would see us three years ago, right? And, and then, even more recently, I mean, it blows my mind to think, so my grandma passed away recently at age 102. And I was thinking back about her life, and it struck me that when she was a teenager, the universe was just a little piece of what we now call the Milky Way galaxy. Mm. That was it. That's... That was it. There were these little wispy spiral things that they called nebulae, but it wasn't until 1925 that Edwin Hubble showed that the Andromeda Nebula is actually so far away that it takes millions of years for light to get here, and it's actually billions and billions and billions, hundreds of billions of other stars. They then called that an island universe, and then they started calling them galaxies <laughs> when they realized they were a dime a dozen. And Today, when we talk about our universe, again, it's simply the part that we can see. It's the interior of the sphere here, which is just the region from which light has had time to get here so far during the 14 billion years through the Big Bang. So, so the, the, the Big, Big Bang. Bang was the origin, and this, is the, this shows the universe as, it, as we see it 14 billion years ago. But if, if that's where we saw it 14 billion years ago, it's expanded since we saw it. So what it is really now, it's a lot bigger if that's the radius of 14. Right. So that's that about, the stuff would be about 40 billion light years away. But of course, the million dollar question is, is there more space beyond right. that? Right. right. If history is anything to go by, <laughs> there probably is. And why would it stop now? Yeah. Why would this expansion stop yeah. now? Yeah. In fact, I got that question very recently when I was uh, giving a little presentation about space from, at the uh, preschool of my son, Alexander. And this little four-year-old kid asks me, Excuse me, <laughs> does space go on forever? <laughs> wow. <laughs> and I'm thinking, whoa, that's such an awesome question because I don't know the answer to it. <laughs> and of course, when I was a little kid, I used to think space has to go on forever because if it doesn't, that must mean that there's a sign there saying space ends here, you know, <laughs> mind the gap. And that's obviously stupid. Yeah. But Albert Einstein taught us that space isn't just the boring, static, infinite thing that Euclid came up with, but rather space itself can be much more interesting, that it's better to think of it as a dynamic rubber sheet mm -hmm. that can stretch out and get larger, that can have ripples in it that travel with the speed of light called gravitational waves, and also that can curve into black holes. And if you take that point of view about space, then suddenly it could actually be finite in a non-stupid way. It could be curved like a hypersphere or a donut, say, and you might go really, really far away in your spaceship in that direction and, <laughs> and say, wait a minute, I've been here before, I'm home. And not realize that, any, that you were making some circle but really thought you were going straight ahead. And you were going straight ahead, right. even in a very and strict if, sense. It's just like if, in the old Space Invaders game when you fly yeah, yeah. off one side of the screen right, and, right. and you come from the other side. But if this is what we can see now, and if this is uh, 40 billion light years in diameter as, as it is Radiant. now, not as we see uh, in radiation, what, um, what could be beyond it? You, you've talked about four levels beyond this. <laughs> 
Tell me about right. them. So, so first of all, the best theory we have for what created this space and made it so big, a theory called inflation, predicts that this is actually part of an infinite space, which of course means that there are a lot of other spheres like this, which anyone living far, far away would see instead of seeing this. Mm. So if we are going to call this our universe, then we have to call this whole collection of regions a multiverse. I, call, I like to call it level one multiverse because it's the it's simplest one. It's part of the one. same space. Exactly. Same old space. In fact, if you went to another region like that, it wouldn't be all that different. The same laws of physics would be taught in the schools over there, yeah. except if you go to university there, it wouldn't be called MIT, it would be called Shmemai Shmi or something like that. <laughs> and the planets would be in different places. So that's already infinite. But if you want and more... And we can never see that because if space has expanded, that expanded faster than the speed of light and we can only see by the speed of light. So this is all we can ever see is as it expands. Actually, if you're willing to wait a little bit longer, light would have time to reach us from farther away. You might hope right. that you could see all that other stuff. Uh. Except, now there's a monkey wrench that's been thrown in called dark energy, <laughs> which will actually prevent us from ever seeing arbitrarily far away into this. Okay, I understand level one, which is all these other areas like ours in this expand expanded space. Level two. Okay, so the same inflation theory that gives us this infinite space also says that space is really, really messy on very large scales. And there are regions where space never stops this crazy stretching out. Which means that if we try to go through those parts of space with a spaceship, it would be kind of like trying to go down the up escalator, but walking slower than it goes. You would never really get there. And on the other side, where there is normal space again with galaxies and stars, it turns out you might actually have slightly different laws of physics. Uh. At least different effective laws of physics. You might have different numbers of quarks and stuff like that. So if you could go there, it would be much more interesting than to just go to the neighboring <laughs> level one universe. And because it's more diverse in the sense, I like to call those level two parallel universes. And, and that, that type of, uh, of a universe is, is really like really squeezed off from us. So it's not just the speed of light, it's some other kinds of characters and the whole laws can be different. Although it's still just our space. It's just that space itself is much more interesting and can have these, these ever stretching barriers that you can't quite right. go through. Okay, level three. All right, so you want still more stuff? <laughs> Are you claustrophobic? Or no, I, I, I want to know reality and I, I, I want to face facts. Okay, so the best understanding we have of how the microcosm works, which you might think has nothing to do with what's out there, has actually given us this theory of quantum mechanics, which predicts still more parallel universes. And the way that goes, it's very simple if you just look at a window at night and you see your own reflection in the glass and you also see the street lights outside. That means, of course, that some light bounces off the glass, some goes through, right? But we know that light's made of these little particles called photons. So that must mean that some photons go through and, and some bounce. But it turns out that what really happens, and that if you want to calculate that it's actually 4% that bounces and stuff, you have to assume that the photons actually both go through and bounce, which means that a little particle of light that's initially just happily trottling along is later in two places at once. And since you and I are made out of little particles, that means that if little particles can be in two places at once, so can we. If, if you were to balance a pencil perfectly on its tip, it would actually fall down into several different places at once. <laughs> and for all practical purposes, parallel universes. This is these level three parallel universes, which the so-called many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics, if that indeed is correct. And so you right. have this branching, this virtually infinite number of branches of branches of branches. And all of these are not part of the same space that we talked about. They are, however, still part of the same Hilbert space, which is this fancy technical word we have in mathematics for, for where quantum mechanics actually takes place. Mm -hmm. So it's, again, really just one world. However, we are only able to perceive a very small part of it. 
And, um, but these other worlds are not like distance from us that we that's can't right. see. We should not think of them as being light years and light years away, yeah, yeah. but in a sense right here. So if you made a snap decision here <laughs> as to whether you're going to have a beer or a wine, yeah. chances are you made both decisions and there's a version of you having each, each one. And then you can just imagine that one of those gets pulled over for drunk driving <laughs> afterwards and the other is not. And, and they sort of diverge more and more yeah. after that. Okay, so what's our level four? And the fourth level, which is the most, would be the most controversial, is um, still grander. And what made me think of this is the following. I have all these colleagues who are struggling so hard to come up with a fundamental theory of everything, which can be captured in some equations, which you maybe put on a t-shirt and mm -hmm. students can walk around with, right? And suppose that you succeed. You find these equations which describe everything there is about our universe and indeed the whole level one, two, three, multiverse two. Yeah, yeah. And you know, why those equations? Why not some others? My math colleagues here study all kinds of other beautiful mathematical structures which they think are just as elegant. And it seemed very strange to me if there was some sort of asymmetry built into mathematics itself that says that some mathematical objects are allowed to describe a physical universe and others somehow aren't. So my guess is that for every mathematically self-consistent set of equations, there's a physical universe. There's really a physical universe for every kind of theoretical math equation. I mean, that, that gives us almost no conception of the, of the limit of what reality can be. That's right. And although it's still not anything goes, by all means. I mean, just <laughs> ask a mathematician to try to prove that something yeah. really exists and, yeah. and so on. It's actually surprisingly hard to come up with things which are self-consistent. And there's the cube, you know, there's the dodecahedron, and so on. But there are only five platonic solids, for instance. And likewise, if you do more advanced math, right, there's certain discrete mathematical mm -hmm. objects which exist in some platonic sense. So how do you look at the overview when you sit back and say, how big can it really get? What do you think? I think we uh, clearly have been wrong many, many times before when we've said that all we can see is, all there is is what we can see, kind of like an ostrich in the sand, right? So I, I think it's pretty clear that there is more to reality than what's inside of this sphere. So to me, the interesting question isn't whether there are, is more, whether there are parallel universes, but how much more there is, how many different levels are there, and what's the nature of all this? 